good morning. Uh, another day in paradise, although it's a little muggy and warm. <laughs> it's Monday, and it's the week that the Republicans are gathering together, this uh, heartless herd of sycophants, unconcerned about the truth or good policy, uh, not very empathetic, and just so eager to replace a failed president with himself. It's amazing. I think it would be water torture to attend or even to listen to Trump Jr. speak this evening. I just can't wrap my mind around it. I'm political obsessive, and I guess I'll sample it. And then Tuesday evening, we have Melania speaking, and uh, that's going to be a special occasion. Uh, I assume she's not going to copy a speech from uh, someone else, say Michelle from last week. But this is this is this venue of this speech really bothers me. I was a, a kid when JFK came to Fordham University, and I was a freshman in the high school. And uh, I didn't know who it was, and I went and I saw him speak. And I found it so impressive that uh, it was a catalyst for my interest in law and politics ever since. He was my president. And Jacqueline Kennedy, when they were in the White House, she invested energy in a special rose garden, a beautiful rose garden. And she used talented people to design it and put it together. And it's persisted ever since, until Melania has destroyed it. It's now her garden, and it's a shadow of the beauty that existed, that was created going back and maintained ever since. So what is this about? I think it's a metaphor for what they do. They destroy and compromise what's beautiful and good. And they do it in policy and in politics, as well as in a garden. Trump, the egomaniac, is going to appear every evening during prime time. He misses his rallies, and he's hoping that these 300 or so people in the room will be excited and that millions beyond will watch it. I sure hope the networks don't easily publish his lies as they accumulate through the week. And finally, I think we always have to talk about the mail-in ballots. We have uh, DeJoy testifying on the Hill, and think about it. Why and how can we possibly believe him? There's no question there were delays. There's no question the president told Fox News that he was just fine with a compromised postal service because then the mail-in ballots wouldn't be moved through the system and would get lost and be suppressed. And yet there are people asking him questions, but not the right ones. Not, so did you beat your wife? Well, not even that good. Did you talk to Trump? Did he tell you to do this? No, of course not. This is a group of people that have lied. So we have to ignore what they say and consider what they've done. And what he's done for any person in that position would be to fire him. Because whether he did it personally, whether he did it with the president, however it happened, he's the responsible person and he should be tossed out the door. So uh, be well and uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye bye.